I have to duck out at 7.30 for a class. I did not know I would have at 7.30 tonight. So apologies for that. Okay, so we'll we'll kick this off. Um, is Susie coming in? Do you know that you heard she is. She, she's she's going to be late now. Okay, so um, I have 7.05. I'll call the meeting to order. Um, I'll point you to the agenda. Uh, first item of business is uh, welcome to our new board member. So a pleasure seeing you. Um, and it's also a pleasure hearing from you. Um, any uh, yeah. comments from the public? Not at the moment, but we'll see what happens in this meeting. <laughs> Okay. That was your chance. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not, right. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> Not having any comments at this time, I'll push forward. Uh, I wanted to try and clean up a bunch of the uh, outstanding minutes that we previously approved and that we need to sign. So uh, I believe Tracy has some things for myself and Cynthia to sign. Do I have to sign the agenda too? No, that's the minutes. Just go to the last page. It's that's how it is. stuff so so uh, do I have a motion to approve this uh, tonight's meeting minutes for men January 12th Catherine okay. is motioning to approve yep second yeah second sorry I think it cut out all in favor? Okay. Aye. Okay, uh, tonight's uh, the minutes for uh, last night or for last meeting for tonight have been approved. Can we sign those? Did I just sign those to be speaking? Okay, um, so having dispensed with all that, and because of um, Catherine's um, short time with us tonight, I wanted to try and get the uh, board officer elections out in front of the group uh, so we can figure out who our uh, our officers are going to be going forward. Uh, I know for sure we said we would be voting on a chair and a vice chair. Tracy is going to be our secretary, so you win the election. And uh, as last I recall, the uh, Friends of the Library liaison was up for discussion. So uh, let's start with the big one. Do we have a volunteer or a nomination for chairman of this group? Eric, if I volunteer, it's Yep. All in favor? Bye. Thank you. Congratulations, Madam Chairman. Um, Vice Chair, do we have a volunteer? A volunteer. Second and approved. Okay, so we have a, a Vice Chair. So uh, the last one is uh, Friends of the Library Liaison. I'll volunteer. <laughs> I just... When are those meetings? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that it Our news is you. <laughs> no, I mean, it's good. That's all. <laughs> okay, we have a volunteer for a liaison for the yes, so when the meetings were. Somebody did. When are the meetings? Oh, I was wondering when those meetings are, I guess. 
Like, if you're Lee's on, when do you go? Or I was just curious. Sorry if I'm holding anything up. You're not. You're not holding anything up. They're. Um, so they get every month. So they're every, every month. month. I think they're the third Wednesday. Remember this right? Is that right? Or the fourth Wednesday. Third, third. third Wednesday of the month. So we had some discussion last meeting about whether to continue. Whether to continue every. Why don't you, Why don't you just review that for Rihanna? Yeah, since she missed it. I, I believe Rihanna that the questions were raised. Is it valuable for us to continue going to every meeting? And then Mark raised the point that in the past the board liaison had voting privileges and so that was another point of clarification that i don't think we have reached out to receive clarity on yet so previous to this year i believe the liaison went weekly this year we tried switching off which was only moderately successful um so it could it could change in the future in a previous board i was on we had a backup in case the main person couldn't make it too, so could you try that instead? Okay, you're you're cutting out from uh, time to time, Rihanna. So um, huh. yeah, I think all good. Uh, my question was answered. Thank you. Okay, so um, we have a volunteer, and uh, if that motion carries, then we have a, a liaison. And if you find that you know you can't make it, then just let us know, and we'll see if we can find somebody else for a particular month or whatever. Okay. Is that fair? <clears throat> I don't anticipate that being a problem. Okay. Great. Okay, I think that got through my big issues. So, uh, John, I'll turn it over to you. Do you have? Um, things for uh, us tonight and can you also discuss the book sorter and the methamphetamine issue while you have the floor? Yep, so um, the book sorter is fully installed and operational. Um, in fact, for those of us here, at some point we can go take a look at it if you want and kind of see how it works. It's kind of cool. <laughs> um, so that's, we can, we can kind of cross that off our list now finally. Um, uh, got installed, had very two minor glitches with it that stopped operations of the sorter for like all of a half a day. Um, so it's, it's working great. It's helping with efficiencies for sure. Um, as far as getting materials in and because of the way it sorts, it puts them in these right categories to make it much faster to shelf. So very happy about that. Um, in methamphetamine news, um, <laughs> everyone's favorite topic, um, we, um, uh, I just sent out to staff, I think last week or so, so the Boulder County um, Public Health put out some information on testing and, and what it means in public spaces versus residential spaces, um, and kind of adding, not kind of, but actually adding clarity to all that's going on in this, which I think was much needed. Um, I think I had mentioned at the last meeting, we did do here some rapid tests that the city has that they use in, in the housing authority um, as, as a determining factor to see if they need to take next steps, either in testing or remediation. Um, and so we did that here and all the rest, we did it in the restrooms because that's where it happens. And um, all that came back negative. We haven't had any other cases since. Um, we have protocols in place, so if we suspect any illegal drug use, we close the restroom right away and clean it, and that's what the Boulder County Health recommends. And really nothing further um, after that, um, except for the public to continue to be conscientious and wash your hands and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, yes? I unfortunately have a little experience with this uh, based on a residential Thing that happened to me when I was trying to buy a house and we had meth contamination come up. So one thing that where they found it was in the air ducts. Mm -hmm. So I'm just curious if you ever had the ducts tested 
or if you are aware of the city has ever had, not you personally, but. Yeah, so with, as far as the ducks, so I did have a meeting with um, our director of facilities here, Jeff and I did, and, and I asked those questions, particularly because that's what happened at Boulder Public. And the way this building is structured is not the same. So the, the restroom exhaust fans just blow all the air out, right? And our intake, they're not, it's, so it's not connected to the HVAC system at all, for one thing. And then the HVAC system for the building is on the other side of the roof. So the potential for exhaust smoke to come out and be sucked back into this building is nearly impossible. That's great. Yeah, so we don't, I don't think we have that same concern that happened in Boulder, and certainly residences is different as well. Um, and, and in fact, that's what this, the Boulder County Health reported was resident, that the whole, all these testing protocols were designed for residences and, and actually developed for a toddler who was exposed to meth 24 hours a day. And so to use those in a public space actually doesn't make sense. Uh, they would have to come up, someone would have to come up with distinct, different testing protocols. So um, it's, it's highly unlikely that any, we've ever experienced that here, but we did the rapid test anyway, just in case, because we had a case or two where we thought someone might have done something. So, um, so that information is out. I've shared it with staff and made it available in case anyone from the public were to ask you know, what, what's going on, and so we can hand that out. It's kind of like an FAQ. A bunch of counties have been doing this. Um, ultimately, what they're saying is that this isn't a major public health crisis. It's actually very low risk to have exposure in a public restroom. And and that's, for me, that's good to get that, that information out and to maybe start downplaying a little bit of the hype that's kind of come up about it and, and this kind of sense of extreme risk that probably isn't there, at least according to the health experts. So do you think Boulder Road will react to I don't think Boulder Public did because their building actually did get, take it in into their air ducts and they tested that and it was in the air. So it was coming into the library, but that's why I asked our facilities here if we would be in that same situation and they said no. They, they also reported that there was an encampment right next to where the intake was, which right. added to the issue. Uh, yeah. Uh, not to mention that the, the, the use that they discovered in catching people in the act was rampant, like a lot in a day. So, you know, not, not a one-off here or there. And they had complaints too. Like Staff were feeling staff sick and dizzy, and 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 all kinds of stuff. So they. Of uh, yeah. In so no, I don't think Boulder public re overreacted at all. I think it did create a sense of hype. John's opinion and some of these other libraries you've heard about, I I believe preemptively tested and then ended up shutting down on protocols that weren't designed for a public space. So it sounds. So I feel pretty good for long run. It sounds like the drug you see while do see in the bathrooms is, is more of a one off. It's a one-off here, and at the end of the day, the, the, the one or two that we, we found basically the after effects, mm -hmm. and you know, it's like foil and ashes, and you can kind of assume that probably that's what it was, but actually it could have been another drug. Yeah. You know, it could have been fentanyl, it could have been anything. There's a lot of things that get smoked, so whether it was meth or not, we still don't know, except for the, the rapid test that we did, which all came back negative. So, um, with any luck, we'll talk about this less and less. Well, that's good news. You haven't seen a, a, a rise in the incident of patrons that have been um, distressed as you know, you know, being sick or distressed or under the influence of drugs. You haven't seen a rise Not or at a all. change in behavior or anything no. like that. No. I, I mean, really, the our our day to day is still the same. I mean, you know, we, we occasionally have incidents of various things, you know, that could be one of them, but we certainly are paying attention to that one. Um, and it's just been those one or two times. Okay. Cool. Um, did you have any new items for us? No. 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 Okay. I, um, 
you should apologize to you, Cynthia. Do you want to run this now that you're? Done? I am happy to hurt you. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Very good. Um, friends of the library report. Do we have anything from the friends to report? Nothing. They both at the retreat. Yeah, I mean, Jamie and I were at the retreat they last month. Longer than I was. Yeah, um, they, they had their. I think it's an annual retreat, um, and talked about kind of the year ahead and, and doing some planning and strategic planning. And one of those is happening tonight with one of the first of four book sales throughout the year um, to raise money, obviously. So, um, but they. I'm trying to think what else what else was discussed. There was a lot of what one might do at a yeah. beginning of the year retreat in terms of goal setting and reviewing priorities and you know it, it for the brief time that I was there and kind of listening to the uh, discussion it struck me as a group that is trying to kind of step into a new a new age a new era kind of maybe modernize and codify some of the things that they're doing, document things, clarify, you know, whose roles are what. So cleaning up uh, all of their organizational stuff and looking how to be more effective. It did come up and it's come up in personal conversations with um, Prudence, the, the president, you know, just wanting to continue to work on improving relations with library staff and with um, other volunteers, I guess, at the library. I guess there's there's some tension between the people who volunteer in the bookshop and the people who do other things, who maybe work on the sales, and we should all be one happy family and that sort of thing. So, yeah, and, and a lot of talk of individual members of that board thinking ahead, wanting to do legacy planning, like what do we do in a couple of years when we do what we're doing and how do we leave you know, whatever it is the, the sales uh, organizing or the sorting or they were talking about like different places maybe to sort books or store books or what do we do next right. or you know, get some new blood on that board okay great um, nothing else on the friends, I'll move along. Um, Susie, do you have anything for us? Um, just a couple of, um, you know, just dates. Um, so we did rese have to reschedule our um, annual legislative dinner. Um, the last time, I think we had one that wasn't able to attend, the other was going to join virtually, and then the third one had to leave early. <laughs> so we rescheduled. Um, so the dinner will be Friday, March 3rd from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Senior Center. It is open to the public, so if anybody wanted to, to attend. Um, some of the topics that we put on the agenda to discuss, the 2023 legislative initiatives, law enforcement reforms, mental health, housing affordability, hope for the unhoused, preschool climate crisis, oil and gas. I mean, it's pretty much everything. Uh, workers' compensation, um, forest fire insurance coverage, um, and then um, you know with single-use plastics, um, yeah. So there's a few other, few other items to to discuss. And then uh, I believe that there is a time for public invited to be heard. So if you wanted to uh, public comment at the end, you are welcome to to attend. Um, our we did set our retreat agenda for March 10th and 11th. It's a two day. The first day, Friday morning, we'll be actually be doing a lot of um, conflict management, guide, looking at guidelines on social media as far as um, council members, what's appropriate, what's, um, what's professional, uh, courageous conversation training, and then pretty much, I believe, the only shift is rather than lunch meeting at 1230, I, we, no, we kept it at 1230. So then after, in the afternoon, that's when we're really gonna be talking about um, you know, city, city issues um, yeah, around 
surveys, you know, public input. The next day we'll be looking at our vision and work plan and setting our goals for the future. I think the second day we'll have more if you wanted to, to hear what it's, um, as far as our goals and um, what our priorities are for the next year. The second day I think has more topics to be discussed. So will there be any time on the, the agenda, do you believe, to talk about the you know, proposed cultural tax initiative? Is that, does that make it to your... Um, so I've system? seen, so like that we were looking at the employee survey, the what staff, what does staff need from council, um, satisfaction survey. Um, it sounds like as we're looking at our roadmaps, there's opportunity to to bring in those things because I know on council we have a lot of questions. Um, you know, as far opportunity as at this retreat or, or future. Well, hopefully we get we get we are able to hear before then. I thought something was going to be coming to us in March, so it'll be around the same time. So we I'm sorry, Susie, I couldn't hear you there oh, when you turned sorry. away. What oh. you say? Um, so here, are you? Maybe I'll bring this closer. Sorry. It's a long day, it's kind of muttery. Um, you know, there might be opportunity for us to discuss in here if we haven't heard from it at council beforehand. But I do, yeah, I do want something to come back to us. I was looking at the timeline that you all sent, and I believe it wasn't there a March. Yeah, back or March. So I, my, my interpretation was that it was going to come to us at a city council meeting in the month of March. Would you agree with that, Jeff? Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay great. Anything else for us? Um, we are going to rethink how we're going to distribute the Bronco money <laughs> over the stadium. Um, you know, we had some heated conversation yesterday. Were you all in the meeting? Uh, <laughs> it's in the news. It's in the article. <laughs> you know, I told you I'm a district negotiator. I don't with <laughs> a lot. I, I can be patient until a period of time. And yeah. So I just I, I was not happy with how the process was initiated to begin with. I think there should have been something stipulated beforehand rather than people who are starting to throw in their mm -hmm. resolutions and ideas and oh, wait, you know, time out. So, yep, we're going to try again. <laughs> Is there a deadline where you have to make a decision? I know, I, I know we're going to have to report out next year yeah. what we use the money for. So, um. so, so I missed the discussion, but it was my understanding that because it was a one time Yes. benefit you were target the council was targeting one-time expenses is that yes, correct? something that would only yeah require a one-time expense so if we're looking at funding programs you know once the money's gone those programs will go and fund it sure so and then, and then how again i'm sorry for missing no no, how, no no how, no how was the priority <laughs> set up for which ones get picked and which ones don't so that's where, so I had brought up a, an idea of rather than having council decide, because the other thing was weird, once they started presenting on, um, you know, supporting the um, youth center and, you know, having the, the money allocated for the dome, um, it, it just felt weird as I'm presenting. I'm like, wait a minute, I feel like that I shouldn't vote on this. If I have my skin in the game, then I shouldn't vote on it. Shakita shouldn't vote on it. Tim shouldn't vote. You know, so then it's so, so that's where I was like, this right. is this is a weird this is a weird process. This isn't working. Um, we're going to have to re rethink um, the proposal I brought, um, and we're going to we're tabling it until the mayor comes back with what she heard from the um, stadium district liaison. Is that we carve out 200,000 that would go towards nonprofits who apply and then the rest of the money really I would like I would like to see it go to children's youth and family um, but or just hand it back to staff and find the appropriate 
because they're, they're they're the ones that are out there you know with the public with the one with the kids with especially youth camps our youth center they're the ones who are who are in the in, in the trenches with that and so you might really like to hear the input from that end so i mean that was initially what i was thinking of before you know people start throwing in their resolutions and all that and i was like okay okay i gotta act now <laughs> Um, otherwise, you know, if I don't say anything, it's it's not going to happen. So, so, so we're going to try again. <laughs> so, so does council come up with the ideas, or does city staff present the ideas to council, and then you guys rank for how to spend the money? No, there was no process other than what the mayors had said. Okay, well, we had um, council member Yarbrough and myself who had the idea for. Um, allocating it for space for the youth center and or recreation and or for dual purpose in that regard and then uh, council member waters have the uh, resolution for the expansion of the children's museum okay well you can probably read where my head's going on this if the library had it i uh, yeah single well, single yes, yes. shovel ready project well and that's so How initially that what i thought there? well what i thought was that we were not going to select any one department because then it pits one department over the other and then as we were digging in and looking you know for the facility you know first a one time so then we're told that you know the other thing we were told was that we cannot use it for capital improvement so that would make the most sense so then since that's it's where, one time it, since it's one time so that's where you know my head was just like i'm i'm, I'm giving up yeah so then know. then it was to put okay well we'll just give it to you <laughs> children's youth and families i'm done i'm done um but no i i i hear you i hear you well i, I mean the I mean, we've addressed the sorter, so so mm -hmm. that's water. Well, and I think over for the me, dam, but I mean, if what there's something we were else looking like at, that. well, the first round that it, the first time it came back to us, we were told, or it was under the assumption that it was supposed to go to something athletic, so some kind of youth sports or recreation sports or something to that degree so movement so we thought fitness chess well, well, new chess board. So, yeah, story, story time yeah <laughs> pretty active <laughs> i know i taught preschool for 10 years and and so story. um so then you know we were, we were thinking along okay how can we address that need but really it was targeting what we wanted to do is target and this i'm talking about uh, council member yarborough and myself are targeting the kids who are maybe on the cusp of getting involved with gang activity, criminal activity, the ones that are not engaged in school, but if we are able to expand the youth center and bring, especially with if we had it near Timberline, getting some of those kids engaged and seeing, having them be exposed to you know, healthy role models, healthy adult role models. And that's that was what we kind of envisioned is really targeting the need is we're seeing an increased number of kids. And I work at a Title I school, and I see it with former students, with my students' kids, um, older siblings and parents. It's just that involvement with you know, pre-game activity, criminal activity, you know, and we're seeing a rise in the community. So what, what can we do that is proactive? So that's kind of where my mind was going with this, and then I don't know, it just kind of, everything spelled out, out of control. I think we were all with good intentions, but it's time to take it back to the drawing board. Okay, well, I know you'll you'll cipher on it, but I would just recommend that maybe the library has a program that fits everything you said that yes. can be a single use expense. Mm -hmm. Don't disagree. Staff, uh, no, staff I, have not been asked our opinions. Uh -huh. Well, it, it, I, again, with without having seen the debate, I, I mm -hmm. feel like I'm probably um, misinformed, but it just seems from listening to you talk that there's not a real good process for getting no, ideas was, in yeah. front of you, yeah. you all to weigh in on. No, this. what I ended up doing is I conducted a really quick impromptu survey that targeted educators in the district, um, well, my former students, 
just, you know, everything that I had in Infinite Campus, I just pulled up, grabbed emails. That was, you know, over 500. And, you know, shot, shot those out. Shout out to our union members, um, to uh, Children's Youth and Families. So the Youth Council was engaged in that process. So it was really, ideally, what we were targeting was students. Okay. Um, unless you have something else for us. No, no, that was it, yeah. Um, I'm not sure who to turn this next one over to. Uh, you, Jeff, or are you, John, to talk about the city's cultural and recreational understanding? I'll start, and John can jump in as, as he can. So uh, in your packet was the timeline that staff have developed uh, for the tax initiative uh, with the next big thing occurring is the uh, polling city has uh, city council has uh, appropriated up to forty thousand dollars to um, create a survey that will be st statistically valid so we aren't ever, all, everybody in this room is not going to get emailed the survey. Uh, so we can't just go online or ask people to go online because we want it to be valid and really represent the, the broader community uh, in their opinion on, on the different questions. So um, the two of the city, assistant city managers and uh, uh, Becky Doyle are finalizing the polling questions. Um, City Council had the opportunity to look at those questions, but because of a timing issue, none of the boards have been asked or given the opportunity to look at those questions. It's what, from what John and I were told last that that survey should be going out soon with the results to be uh, presented back to council in March. So, so the boards will not be asked. Will be because no. yeah, because of the timing and, and needing to get it turned around. Once that information has been uh, provided to council, uh, John and I and Tracy will provide that those survey results to you just as soon as we can. Um, if you want, I. Based on what feedback John and I have been given, I can kind of share a, a kind of how it relates to the, the library if sure. you're interested in that. Sure. So just as a reminder, included in the tax initiative uh, right now is $22.7 million for a 30,000 square foot branch library, as well as a little over $3 million for operating of that branch library. That includes all costs to operate it, as well as a capital replacement fund so that as things in the branch would need to be replaced, there is a resource to have money to do that work. Right now, within the city system, we do not have that type of, of funding source. And at times, I believe it puts us behind as it relates to being able to maintain our facility. So uh, that is included. Um, again, it's a st statistically valid survey, should be going out soon. Um, included in that uh, survey, there are questions about often do you use the 12 facilities, the library being one of those, recreation, museum, golf, and uh, the youth center. In there it asks specifically about uh, the library, at least the draft does. I, I don't want to get ahead of myself and say this is final, but the, the last draft that uh, I did see would include um, what the property tax would increase and what sales tax would increase to co help cover the operation. Um, and just 
while parking it just to give you kind of an, an idea is the property tax would go up uh, approximately $38 a year for a home that's valued at $500,000 and the sales tax would increase by 11 cents on $100 of taxable purchases. Uh, it also asks that same question about the museum, about recreation, and about, about the uh, park enhancements. Uh, again, that information will be collected over the, the next month and presented to council. And uh, again, we'll get that, that information to you as soon as it, it is available. Well, uh, thanks for sharing that. So, you can, uh, because I was a little slow in hearing all the great points you were um, making, I just want to kind of go through what, yep. I, what I thought I heard. Yep. Um, so, did you say, well, first of all, fr from an overall perspective, the survey as it relates to the library identifies all this all these things that you're you're asking the public to weigh in yeah. okay and then did you say 22 million is a capital budget for the it, branch 22.7.7 mil for the for the branch for the branch library okay. and does the initiative have other capital not for the library. funding for the library just, just for the just, branch just the branch just the branch at and, a near so uh, I think I know where you're going at a well I don't know where I'm at, going at so. A meeting, so what because it's only the one branch there are things in motion that John and I are working on for the budget process to ask for the funding for a store storefront uh, library as well which would be separate from this initiative because based on on the study it it recommended both a branch, a, a large branch library, and a storefront. So, John and I are, are working on that. Incidentally, uh, Boulder is just moving forward on their their little Boulder Library branch that made the paper today. Yeah, John and I talked about that <laughs> branch, and we'll, we'll probably go over and visit that. As well. okay, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, so then. Um, in terms of um, what you're asking the public to weigh in on, can you comment as to what level of service you're trying to fund? Well, remember there's preferred level of service and baseline level of service. Is any of that? <clears throat> that is not in these numbers. This is specifically about- Capital. Uh, capital and operational dollars to operate the, the branch, which would move us towards the, the preferred level, but it does not get us to the top one percent. It was it was one component of, yeah. of, of the preferred level. Yeah. So there's there's that other aspect, if I may, um, to the feasibility study that really hasn't been baked into anything going to the voter. At this no. Point. Or exactly. or do you think it will, or do you think? I don't believe it will. What John and I have talked, and please, John, jump in, is uh, trying to address that some of that uh, with a first phase proposal in request, excuse me, request for the 24 budget. So these things would be done in conjunction. We really want to have the storefront in that request so that um, we we have an alternative if the tax initiative would fail. Okay, well, I, I think it's great that the city's embracing the concept of a branch and the storefront and all yeah. that. To, to me, half of the message from the uh, feasibility study is not being addressed in terms of what needs to be done here, in, ter in terms of um, staffing, uh, facilities, stuff like that. And, Somehow, in all of us, I would hope that that gets embraced and addressed. You know, I mean, there's a lot of money being pushed around, I'm sure. And, and I think as we're moving forward in this process and we're trying to define what would be in a branch library, um, that it would 
provide opportunity that maybe doesn't have to be at the main library, which then could result in us restructuring what happens here so that we're pro trying to provide a wide variety of library experiences a across our community. Uh, that's fair. I mean, that's a that's a, a fair response in my mind. It's just understanding what that all is, yeah. and because there are deficiencies here in terms of programming, staffing, uh, facilities maintenance, stuff like that. That I think, yeah. yeah. And those are all things we will be reporting back to you as we start uh, getting ready for the twenty four budget right. process. Right. And those things, yeah, they need to be brought forward because yeah. I think that many times in the past, it, yeah. we weren't hearing that it was articulated to city, you know, the powers that be, us, that that was a need. Yeah. And so that was also very frustrating. It's like you hear these side conversations, but once it came to officially, you know, making that request, it wasn't happening. Yeah, well, thank you. You'll get the request this year. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Yeah. I mean, it's it, 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 that's okay. My superintendent is pretty sick of me. So. Well, I appreciate the support that you just put in, Uncle Susie. To me, the fact, excuse me, that the boards don't get to weigh in then kind of shields the public from those issues. That unless the city did somehow figures out how to put them back in front of the public to weigh in on they just won't get addressed but i and yes i agree with that i i guess my response would be is after this uh the polling results are are back i think that will educate the city on what really should move forward or maybe it doesn't move forward mm -hmm. in the tax initiative and, and again that's based on direction from council and then based on that direction will uh, include boards in the community involvement processes attending different uh, community events to get word out and gather information that sort of thing so i there will be uh, a time and i and i think soon that the board will have more of an active role in that once the, the polling is done. Okay. Um, I'm kind of stepping on Cynthia's toes a little bit here, but you had mentioned last time that maybe we should get Becky Doyle in to talk to the group. I wanted to present uh, this information. As a, as a and, future agenda yeah, item. And we can certainly do that. Um, I will also share that in the meetings when John and I are there, we're sharing the board's point of view with the main thing that we're trying to represent is your interest in having dedicated taxes that are committed to the library. I don't, I can't really respond on because there's no decision or no direction that's been given. Uh, but I will assure you all that we are sharing that message uh, often uh, as, as much as we can. Well, well, thank you for that because there's really nothing I could point to to say it's being protected. I mean, you've, you've targeted some money, right. but I mean, that can go way over time yeah. or whatever. So, I mean, it's how, how do we manage it so the library is protected? Uh, but, and, I, and you've heard that message, so yeah. I think you know where our heads are at. Yeah. Uh, again, I'll, since I'm monopolizing the conversation here, I'll throw one more out yeah. on the table. Um, I've seen some stuff in the paper where, where the city is, um, I don't want to say struggling, but, but um, trying to figure out how to move forward on a bunch of initiatives that already has because of inflation, inflation impact. Do you see that impacting what you're trying to do here with the cultural initiative? Or do, you, do you think this is good money or do you think it needs to be more? Or do you think it's going to get uh, superseded by the, the, the 
emergencies of the day, so to speak, or the exigencies. Meaning, if we go to a vote, can this money be used for something different? Well, me meaning that there's so much attention to not being able to do the things you've already approved that that somehow this this gets superseded as an issue. I that's probably a question for Susie more than. Do you want me to take another shot at well, clarifying? Well, so what I'm, I'm thinking, so I'm trying to figure out what you're, so are you saying that in due to the, you know, if inflation and the cost to build that branch library exceeds, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, not, not exactly. Where, where my head was at was that if the, if the city is struggling now with the money it's allocated for these projects because mm -hmm. it's not enough, Yeah. to try and uh, overcome that gap, so to speak. They're going to try and find money to complete those projects, and by 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 putting that demand back on the community, plus this demand for additional monies on the community, to somehow kill yeah. what you're I'm trying to hearing, do. I'm not hearing, you know, something is to go. Another initiative was to go on the ballot, I guess, to cover the water, you know, all the um, all the water repairs. That, Nelson Flanders and I think what was the other one that was it Price Park that you know exceeded the, the cost is exceeding what was um, anticipated um, well one you cannot use the money if the voters voted on this that money cannot be used to, to uh, it's, it's, more, it's more a political capital thing if, if, if the voters have to pony up a little bit more for what's already been approved mm -hmm. will they pony up for this initiative does, does this initiative go away for a while in an effort to I That's question? not my understanding, and I would not, I would not yeah. approve of that. that. In a better way than I yeah, said. No, I wouldn't. I have not heard that either. I have not heard that. Okay. The, yeah. But to respond to something else you yeah. did say, Mark, is it, the amount of money that we have, you know, that we estimated that the projects cost, um, that was done last fall mm -hmm. and John and I have uh, made a Swap. yeah and we've we've made a suggestion that based on being six months later and knowing what we're seeing in costs uh, for current projects do we need to revisit our estimates to make sure we're not setting the city up for a whole nother set of issues that they're facing with the current projects. That's, that's a that fair was question. Mm -hmm. fair I was involved in the um, capital project for a new high school building for the uh, Shiny Mountain Waldorf School. Mm -hmm. And just because everything takes so long with getting all the permitting mm -hmm. and blah, 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 before we even broke ground on that building, the the costs had skyrocketed, and of course, COVID had come in, and all of these other contributing factors to inflation. But now we were looking at having another huge gap to uh, to, to breach. So that would be a, a concern of mine. You know, what is the contingent? It's like all about contingency plans in the back of my head. Yes. You know, yeah, even yeah. thinking about the initiative, if that doesn't go as favorably for the library as we would like. What's Plan B? Yeah. You know, what are the alternative funding structures that we want to pursue next? Yeah. But yeah, because if even <laughs> if, well, I mean, it, it, I mean, it's all fair. I mean, as, as a taxpayer, I, yeah. I I think you can appreciate if if the number gets too big, it's just not going to get voted. Not gonna get it's in favor of right. But as this group who has a goal. Right, it's like we've got to be ready to pivot to like, all right, well, that was a great idea, it didn't go the way we wanted to. Now, I can't wait to see how you guys do that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I said, you know, what are we gonna do? It's <laughs> Mark's meeting still. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I think I've, I've monopolized enough time here. Do you all have questions you want to get in front of uh, Jeff or John on this before? Um, I guess just to clarify, and my understanding is correctly that a lot of things are still up for possible changes based on the polling results in July is when that will be finalized. Yeah, because council has to set the ordinances in August. And that one thing that brought up a 
uh, something I was talking about last month. City Council sets the ordinances and sets the ballot questions. It does not have to go to Boulder County. Okay, that very simplifies. The one other question is on my, this is a smaller part because it's, my understanding from what you just said is if this plan moves forward, there would be requests for large budget increases. Can you all remind us of what the schedule for budget is for the city? Um, capital improvement projects generally staff um, make our requests in April for the general fund which would be the operating dollars for uh, the library that is done in May and uh, that usually shuts off the system shuts off right around the 31st of May and it depends on when that weekend falls uh, but that that's our timeline of those are the only times we can really make requests for 24. When do you hear about? We, we see what is proposed in late August when the city manager is required to submit a budget to city council. Will you be able to share that with this group before um, the city weighs in? The, Let me try that a different way. So in April and May, I don't want to supersede your conversations with your, your fellow staff members, but it'd just be nice at the beginning of the process if we know what you're trying to ask for. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. whatever political weight this group could apply yeah. to help you, we would like to do that. Right? Yeah. So yeah. based on that schedule, we should probably plan on talking about the capital <coughs> improvement, the, the capital side of it at the March meeting. Okay. And then the general fund budget at the April meeting. I think that's that's great. Is it possible that the outcome of this polling um, would inform what you ask for? I think it will help help drive that. Yes. Okay. So there is a connection. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I don't I don't assume this is gonna happen, but if community comes back with or the polling comes back with we don't want any of this stuff mm -hmm. that that really um, sets a different standard I don't think that's what's going to happen because I think our community is pretty supportive of mm -hmm. libraries and museum and, and recreation and often are asking what well, not why are you doing it but why aren't you doing more and I, I hope that's what comes out of the polling but if it doesn't, then um, that John's going to need two pencils <laughs> to uh, yeah. put down all he needs. So to like really distill it to the very basic essence, the polling is to test the receptivity of the community yeah. to this idea of yeah, an increase in taxes. Yes, and and the, the question, and I'm sorry I didn't finalize right. this comment or thought, is that it uh, it talks about what the question is, how how likely you are to vote for increased mm -hmm. taxes, specific to the library and recreation. They're all separate questions. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Rihanna, do you have any questions to get out on the table? Um, not on this one. Okay, I had just a couple, uh, I guess, in closing. So this this uh, timeline or whatever, is it the two city managers and Becky that are spearheading this whole effort? They're the leaders of it, yes. Okay. And then, um, do you see a more detailed chart at some point coming up? Uh, this is I pretty broad have, brush. Yeah, I, I think it has to because, you know, August is rushing at us. Just inquiring the next one to go. Yeah. <laughs> I was just happy to get this because it was a start. It's a good start. Yeah. It's a good start. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't want to sell your short. Yeah. It's a good start. Yeah. 
So, uh, yeah. So I, I guess what I would it just kind of in closing, at least from staff side, um, let's see how the polling results go next month. And then we can identify whether we need to invite, invite Becky uh, Doyle to our, our next uh, tour meeting, if that's all right. Okay. Well, I'll leave that up to Cindy in terms of what she wants to do. Uh, okay, unless there are additional questions on this one, I'll, I'll move on. Um, Longmont Library District Committee, I don't have anything to report out on this. Does anybody from the public have anything to report out on this? No. Still on hold. <laughs> Waiting on you guys. Okay. Um, I didn't uh, put it on this agenda, but I, I probably should have under new items. Uh, we had talked about this a little last time, so it's not completely new, but. Um, I think Jeff brought up the fact that the, the board hadn't uh, approved new bylaws since 16. I don't know if you said 16 or not, but I checked it was 2016. So uh, that probably should be something that the group should think about going forward. Is, is the, what if any of those new, um, new bylaws should uh, encapsulate? Um, with that, uh, I don't have anything additional. Does anybody else have anything additional they want to put on the table for discussion? No, 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 not, not seeing any. Um, any comments from any of the board members on anything? No, well, no. If you're looking to update your bylaws, we just did that with our union bylaws. Three months. And <laughs> Super Bowl, I was six, six more hours to hurry up and get them all out. It is a grueling process. So uh, not too all. Boards are a little easier. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was intense. <laughs> all right, well, that, that's uh, good advice. Yeah. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Um, so with that, uh, I will. Um, put out that next month, uh, meeting date is March 20th. And with that, I will uh, close the meeting at 8.03. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.